Well hello glorious people of the interwebs and welcome back to Atlas. Today we're going to be showcasing one of the best creatures that you need to be getting early on in the game. We're going to be showing exactly how to tame it, the stats you should be focusing on, and a couple other things as well. I really hope you enjoy this episode and the first creature we're going to be checking out today is the mighty wild rhino these things look freaking awesome and one of my favorite new looking creatures in the game look at this freaking horn imagine getting stabbed by that this thing is beautiful the texture work is great and i really cannot wait to breed these and get mutations unfortunately it does seem like breeding has not been fully implemented i knew that it wasn't going to be implemented for um people but I did anticipate it being fully implemented for creatures. Unfortunately, we're going to have to wait for an update, and that's probably server-related because, you know, people breeding tons of creatures is probably going to create server lag. So hopefully we'll be getting that soon. And as you can see, we're going to be able to get color mutations. They all have their own color zones. We'll be checking that out in this video as well. Now, we will get into exactly why this is one of the best creatures that you need to be getting early in the game. But we do need to go over a few things first. Now, to tame these, you will need to be getting into the Taming Efficiency, which is under Beast Mastery. Now, to unlock Beast Mastery, you need to get Tools of the Trade, Hand-to-Hand -hand Combat, and then you can unlock Beast Mastery. Now, I'm only level 8, and I was able to get all of these skills required for this, so you don't need to be very high level to tame these either. Basically, once you get out of the Freeport, if you're focusing on taming creatures, you should be good to go. Now, you are going to need at least riding tier 2 or higher and breeding tier 2 or higher to be able to ride and breed these. Unfortunately, I don't have the saddle. You see here we get craftable generic saddles. When you put it on, it basically just fits. Unfortunately, I don't, I'm not able to get the saddles for some strange reason right now. Um, but all in all, you're going to need at least riding and breeding tier 2 or higher to be able to do this. Now, we'll get into exactly how to tame these here in just a second. We'll go into the stats of these that you need to focus on. Now, if you go into here... Uh, we can actually check out this level up animation, which is also going to be the cuddle. Now, you really want to boost stamina onto these creatures. And there's a very specific reason for that, because they have an ability that is very stamina dependent. Now, you can melee, me or you can level melee damage and weight if you so desire. Uh, both of those options are going to be good, and we'll get into that right now. Now, let's just go ahead and level that up, because that is freaking adorable. Look at that thing just squirm around. They look so cuddly. Now, as far as the skills for this, we have basically like a bowl charge. And as you charge, this will basically just make you go faster and faster and faster. And this is quite a fast mount. But as you see, it can be very, very stamina depleting. When we're at max speed, our stamina depletes very fast. Now, if we're not sprinting or doing this bowl charge, it is a relatively slow creature, um, but aside from that, once you're at full speed, very, very quick. You can knock down trees, but the second you hit anything like a tree or a creature, you will immediately slow down. But you can see just how fast we're running out of stamina here. Now, the main reason that you want to get this specific creature is because of its main attack and its ability to gather flint and stone. This is going to be amazing for building your bases really early in the game, as well as getting things like metal. We can find something that's actually going to give us flint. You'll see here that we're going to be able to acquire a ton of it. Now, interestingly enough, we're only acquiring stone now. Every other time I've done this, I've gotten... I must have changed the uh, the gathering order, maybe? Harvesting settings. Um, well, that's weird. This guy is, like, broken right now. So before I was able to gather uh, thatch and wood from trees, it's not a lot, and it's definitely not the best creature for it, but I wonder why this one seems to be broken. Let's gather, let's grab our other rhino. You can also gather while sprinting. I wonder if there was just an update that fixed it, now it's only gathering stone. It was getting flint before. That is so strange. I don't know what, if I changed something or what on that thing, or if it's just glitched out. But now we're getting the flint and gathering all the other materials like we're supposed to be able to. I don't know if I somehow changed the gathering settings on it. I didn't even know you could do that. That's interesting. So we're going to get flint and stone from this, which is going to be great for building out your bases. Now you see that we're also able to gather things from bushes. So we're getting like chamomile and berries. So this is going to be one of those just great all around creatures. Now, you're definitely not going to want to use this to gather wood and thatch. There's better creatures for that, and we'll be showcasing many of these in the coming days or hours even. 
Um, but for now, definitely one of the best creatures for gathering stone, metal, berries, and stuff like that. Highly recommended for getting this very early. Now we're going to get into how to tame these right now. And it's really a relatively easy process, although it is still time consuming just like Ark. Now to tame these creatures, you are going to need to have Beast Mastery and Taming unlocked. And you're going to need Bolas. Now when you pull out your Bola, you can see here that says Target has too much health to entrap. Now you can create some kind of taming trap and damage it with bows or really whatever you want to do. We're just going to go ahead and take our rhino here and we're going to deal some damage to this and then we're going to tame it. It's a pretty easy process, in my opinion a lot easier than the Torpor method from Ark Survival Evolved. Although it's pretty much essentially the same type of process. Once we get this thing down to enough health, all we need to do is pull out our bola and now we can successfully trap it. There we go. Now it's downed, and it basically looks like it's just under this Torpor effect that would have been the same in Arc. Now you'll see here that Bola escape in 1 minute and 30 seconds. You're going to need to make sure to have a bunch of these Bolas. Now, we need to tame this thing, and we need to feed it turnips. That is what they love, and we're going to go ahead and put a turnip in its mouth here. So we got 1.3 taming percent with one turnip at level 4. You can do the math. It's going to take a long time to tame. Basically, we have to sit here and wait until it's hungry again, which is going to be in 10 seconds. So really, the timing for this isn't too bad. It's a little bit better than an arc, I believe, because um, we don't really have to wait for it to eat on its own. It's pretty much just we feed it, and it's every 22 seconds. I wonder if this gets a little bit higher every single time we do this, but it's at 2.6%. But you are going to need a lot of turnips and a lot of bolas when you go to tame these. Let's see, we got 10 seconds left. I'm curious to see. It's also regaining health. So you're going to have to continuously do damage to this thing as well. We can't enter its inventory and poison it. So we could probably do damage to it while it's on the ground. So there we go. So now it's at so it's at 22 seconds again. Let's pull out our sword here. And let's do damage to it while it's on the ground. That way, we don't have to obviously fight it again. We could probably instantly bolo it once it's back up. We're going to feed it a turnip in 5 seconds, but we have to bolo it in 10. There we go. Feed. There we go. Now it's going to be up, and we want to make sure to bolo it. Oh, it regained health the second it got out. So you're going to have to keep that in mind. Oh, God! Save me! It's a big disaster. Now we need to whistle passive, probably. Whistle passive. Interesting. This is a really terrifying process, actually. You can see here basically what needs to be done. I would recommend making a trap for these. Use a pillar method trap or something like that. Basically the same as Ark Survival Evolved. I'll probably make some episodes on exactly how to build taming traps. Yeah, so let's pimp slap it with our sword here a little bit. Be good to go there. And bolo. So at least you don't have to worry about taming efficiency, which is kind of nice. Feed turnip to tame. Why is it at red now? So the taming effectiveness is still at 93.9%. At least it doesn't lose taming effectiveness when you damage it. Very interesting method. I don't know if I like this method more or less than what was in Ark Survival Evolved. But feel free to let me know in the comments below. But that is how you tame one of these crazy ass rhinos. I'm actually really excited to get one of these either on the official server or when we start on our private servers. I am going to be hosting a massive private server with G Portal. I've got it up right now, but it's just a matter of getting some of the map expansions onto it. And I'm really hoping it's going to be awesome. The servers run significantly better on a private server. Uh, so if you're looking to run your own, definitely make sure to check out G Portal. By far the best server provider you can get. I've used every single one of them and they will be hosting my Atlas servers for this because I feel like it's going to need a lot of power and G Portal definitely offers the best bang for your buck. Feel free to check out the description for a discount link if you're looking for your own private servers. But I did want to showcase one more thing, which is the color zones here. So this is what you can anticipate things looking like when you're getting full mutations on them. 
And obviously we'll be able to get color mutations. Unfortunately, we can't breathe and I can't show what they look like as babies. I'm not able to set the baby age, so it's definitely not implemented right now. But hopefully in the near future it will be because that was my favorite thing to do in Ark Survival Evolved. And it's going to be sorely missed right now in this game. Obviously it's going to be a thing, we just have no idea how long it's going to be. Uh, but there are like five separate color zones. You got two for the scales. The body has its own color here. We've got the horn and then the little, like, head armor there. No, this, these things look awesome fully mutated. Like, I am super excited to breed these. Probably going to be making a zoo. I'd love to do it unofficial, but, you know, trolls will be trolls. I think I could only do, like, a zoo like that on PvE or something. Uh, and right now we've been playing on PvP. But I will be having that private server series coming very soon. Just working out the kinks with the servers. And, uh, well, the server's up. There's just not a lot to do on private servers at the moment. But regardless, uh, I hope you guys all enjoyed it. Let me know if there's any specific creatures you would like to see showcased on the channel first. I believe we're going to be showcasing the elephant next. Or maybe the bear. But thank you all so much for watching. And I'll see you all in the next one.